So today's class uh, is a continuation of yesterday's example. Uh, there's not too much more theory to cover. Um, the theory we looked at yesterday, in fact, will be all that we need. And so today's class is a lot of interactive case studies, um, calculations. I'm going to uh, take the projector away in a minute. Um, and then we'll just focus primarily on the board. So I just want to quickly see if I can get this up here. This is yesterday's problem. It's slide 38, 39, somewhere around there. Okay, so we were looking at this example uh, in, in the class there. And let's just get a visual picture. We've seen this picture before, but um, let's just emphasize it that we've got this membrane where we're feeding our material. So we come to the membrane and we need to set up a pressure difference. So we need a pump of some sort to do that. And that feed comes into the membrane and we use our standard symbol for membrane, a uh, square or rectangle with a diagonal line. And from that membrane, we have our permeate stream leaving with concentration CP for the permeate concentration and flow rate QP for the permeate flow. Our retentate um, stays over here on this side, and we've got that concentration CR and flow rate, or uh, sorry, volumetric flow QR. And I had um, set up these equations in the class uh, yesterday, and we had solved the first two, and I'm going to address them again just quickly as a recap and then move on to part three. And essentially, this feed coming in has concentration. Let's perhaps put it over here, C naught, and we're told that our feed has four kilograms per meter cubed is the concentration. We're only, we're only working with concentrations in this problem, but you'll see why I've written up the flows there um, in a minute. The desired solute, remember solute was a new term we said last class um, is essentially solid, so 20 kilograms per meter cubed is over there. And the question is asking what is the flux? JV is the flux, and JV, another way of writing that is to say QP, the permeate flow, divided by the area. Okay, so JV is flux of solute, sorry, flux of solvent. Uh, solvent is the material that's passing through the membrane so it's QP, the permeate flow over A, flux is uh, that flow per unit area. And we're told that this equation is of the form 0.2 log 25 over C bulk. Okay. Now this is not a, a surprising equation structure. Based on yesterday's derivation, we saw that the flux can be derived in this way if we look at the concentration gradients and the pressure differences. We derived that yesterday where this 0.02 is essentially your mass transfer coefficient. 25 is the concentration right there at the wall of the, of the membrane. And C bulk is the concentration that's mostly in the membrane, across most of the membrane surface. And in fact, in fact uh, I said yesterday when we see the C bulk, we should be using the retentate concentration over there. So we calculated then. Uh, part one, I won't repeat that, but part two was um, essentially we showed the following. Let's just quickly recap that. Part two is the flux. JV is 0 0.02 times log of 25. And I had asked in part two, what is the flux if we're able to reach our desired endpoint? Well, our desired endpoint is a bulk con concentration or retentate concentration of 20 kilograms, so 25 over 20, and the number that you get over there is 0 0.0045 meters cubed per hour per meter squared, or we said that's 4.5 LMH. Okay, so that was yesterday's class um, example where we left off. Now let me ask you the following. What is the flux this is um, part three. What is that flux if we're going to require a solute concentration of 10 kilograms per meter cubed? Is it going to be higher or lower? Just looking at that equation. 
is my flux going to be greater or smaller than this value if I would like, instead of 20 coming out of the retentate, I'd like 10 kilograms. Higher flux. Okay. So CB, this bulk concentration, then instead of 20 is 10. We're dividing through by a smaller number. This log is a larger value. We get a larger flux. That's mathematically. But engineering, what does your intuition tell you? You want a higher, a lower concentration out there, 10. We can get larger fluxes because what we'll end up doing to achieve that larger flux is we'll push the velocity over that membrane surface a lot faster, right? So mathematically, yeah, we can see mathematically we'll get a higher flux. That's all good and well. We can write up the numeric value there. But the question is, how do you actually operate your membrane to get to that? Okay, right, so I'm feeding in a feed of four kilograms of solids per meter cubed. What do I have to change from this existing operation in order to get, instead of 20 over there, I'd like 10. So I'd like less solids in that retentate. I'm, I'm happier uh, to accept a lower solids concentration. But practically speaking, what do you physically go change here? How would you actually implement this? Right, the mathematical equation there doesn't tell you how you go and change your system. Right, so I can, I can sub in the numbers for you. 0 0.02 log of 25 over 10. And the answer is 18 LMH. Recycle some of your permeate back. That's one option. Let's take a look um, at this prior slide. This prior slide gives the key. We'll come back to that thought there. Um, this slide indicates what we might be able to do. Flux on the vertical axis. Now, this is British units, so that's OK, but it, the idea holds. Essentially, we're seeing if we would like faster fluxes, we need to feed at faster fluid velocities, so 6, 8, 10 fluid velocities. And so that comes to the suggestion there of recycling to get a faster fluid velocity. Because at the end of the day, coming into the membrane is your need to treat a certain volumetric flow rate, Q0, right? So whatever that value is, you need to treat that flow. You can't create more Q0, right? Q0 is coming from some upstream process. So if you want faster fluid velocities, and this flow rate is fixed, the only way you can do that is to recycle something. And what we will recycle most commonly is the permeate, uh, sorry, is the retentate stream. We'll bring the retentate back and recycle it. Okay? And you open and close this valve, you throttle that valve to get the right amount of flow. And that way you can increase the velocities or decrease the velocities to adjust the retentate concentration. Okay? So what we've now doing essentially is by recycling, now this flow rate coming in at this point, this Q entering the membrane is at a, is at a higher value. So this, the membrane is the same geometry, but you're putting more feed through it. The velocities through those channels are faster. Now, you can read, um, read quite a bit about this sort of thing. I've posted on the course website. I'll, I'll just pull up it over here. Uh, GE has this phenomenal handbook of um, membrane operations. And they, they're showing various configurations. And the one that, that we're focusing on here is essentially your feed coming in with a pump, a valve, and you're taking it into the membrane. And notice that the retentate is recycled. And there's that valve I'm referring to that we can adjust the flow. Why is there a pump over here? Just a practical point. What's happened in the membrane? There's a pressure drop that has to be the same pressure as the Right. We, 
in the membrane, I remember I showed you those spiral wound membranes yesterday, a very, very complex, complex path that the fluid will flow, and there's going to be pressure losses to drive your fluid through that. So the, the pressure coming in is whatever the pressure is. There's a huge loss over the membrane. In fact, most of our money to run a membrane process is to pay for the operating costs, electricity to pump material. So coming out here, you've got fluid at a lower pressure. We have to bring that up to pressure, right? If we don't do that, what's going to happen with this fluid? Fluid is going to always flow where there's the greatest pressure drop. Well, it's, your fluid is going to flow in that direction, right? So you have to get this pump to bring the pressure up to the same level so that at that junction, you've got the pressure to drive it into the membrane. So repressurize your retentate and cycle it around to get that flow. Okay, so I've posted this GE book on the course website. Please, please read it. It's a phenomenal resource. GE has, um, they don't actually publish it anymore. They did up to last year, but there's a copy there for you to, to download and read. And I've even spoken to people in GE. They don't even know that this book exists out there because it's such a big company. Their left hand doesn't know what their right hand is doing often. So use this. This has got really, really good information. The prior page, in fact, talks all about how you select your pumps, which pump should be used. Um, they, they have various uh, examples of types of pumps depending on what pressure drops and flow rates you need to achieve. Okay, so a lot of practical advice on membrane operation. But um, the interesting thing here now, and this is where we're going to move to, is this idea of having multiple membranes. Okay, so I'm going to look at that next. Now, just one other thing here, notice that GE uses this uh, term permeate, which we've also used, but they call this concentrate, or we've, we've used retentate. So you'll sometimes see that terminology used as well. Any questions on this example before we move on? Not just yet. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at a little bit more um, engineering discussion here around this. Pro and I'm going to essentially take this problem and put some new, uh, some different numbers to it, change the configuration a little bit, and uh, let's take it from there. So I'm going to turn this off. So we're going to use this system as shown over here. You might want to draw it. This is a new example. Okay, so similar values, we've got the need to treat four kilograms per meter cubed of solids, but this time I'm giving you a flow rate. Two and a half meters cubed needs to be treated every hour with this membrane. We're going to use this idea of a recycle stream. In the, in the notes, this is called feed plus bleed, because what you essentially do is you, you recirculate here with the recycle loop, but you bleed off your retentate. So that's where the name comes from, feed plus bleed. We know that we want to achieve a certain desired output over here, and we would like CR. I'm going to use back to 20 kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, and this is uh, now where the problem is going to become interesting because Notice this problem is no different to the one that we've looked at prior. The only new piece of information I've given you is the volumetric flow rate, Q0. Okay, nothing's changed. If you look at it from an overall balance perspective, you don't actually need to know what the recycle flow is. That recycle ratio does not need to be known. So Q0 coming in over here at my feed point, so these Numbers refer to what the overall feed and overall concentration are. My question to you is, and this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, so we're going to work through this. Um, you're going to work through it with your colleagues as well. Is I want you to find 
these numbers over here. And I want you to tell me how much area I need to buy. So this membrane needs to be a certain size. What area does that need to be? Okay. So I'm going to give you one hint. CP, the permeate concentration, is zero kilograms per meter cubed. That's an easy hint because like Sean Johnston said in the last class, we design these ultrafiltration membranes so that nothing permeates through. So if no solids pass through, right, no viruses, no bacteria, no solids, we get zero kilograms per meter cubed. How are you going to solve for the remaining values up there? So what I want you to do here is, again, define, explore, and plan. And this is stepping it up a bit because this time we don't just have one thing that we're trying to find, we've got three things. Okay, so write out and plan your strategy that you might use to solve this problem. We'll give you a few minutes to do that. This problem was from a previous midterm, so just to give you an idea of that level. So if you've forgotten that strategy, there's a breakdown of the steps involved.
Okay, so I hope uh, you've, got, you've given this a, a bit of a shot. Anyone um, want to share, or any group want to share their plan for this um, problem, how they might go about it? Yeah. Overall mass balance? Solve for QP, okay. Okay, and then use the flux equation to solve for the area. Okay, so overall mass balance and then a flux balance. Um, let's, uh, let's break that down a, with a, a few more details. Um, our aim here is to solve, as I'd asked you, for these, these unknowns as shown on the board. So I'm going to emphasize them here. We don't know QR, we don't know our area, and we don't know QP. So the two flow rates out and the area of the membrane are unknowns. Okay, we know everything else. Okay, so my aim and my knowns and unknowns are done. We've drawn a picture up here. Which equations apply? Um, as was mentioned there, the flux equation applies and overall balance equations apply. Okay, now how do we achieve the goals? We've got three unknowns. We need three equations. So we know that from Dr. Adams's class from 3E. So three unknowns, three equations. Well, let's take a look at, at what those equations are. Anyone want to start with, with any one of them? Specific equations. Yeah. Q0 equals QR plus QP. Everyone agree with that? Okay, that's my overall volume balance. Any other balances or other equations? Should they? So this is a mass balance this time. This one was a volume balance on the flows. This one specifically is a mass balance. So Q naught QR, uh, sorry, Q naught Q C naught equals QR CR plus QP CP. Okay, and you can simplify it away already, that term is zero. Any other equations? We need an equation with A. So far, we only have equations with Q's and C's, but we have this unknown A. So there's my flux equation. So my flux equation is JV don't really care too much what JV is, but I do know that JV is QP over A. And my denominator is which term? CR, okay. So let's just check. Uh, we've got three equations. My unknowns appear in these equations. Let's highlight the unknowns. Q0 and C0 are known, QR is unknown, CR I do know, A is unknown, QP is unknown, and CR is known. Okay, so how am I going to solve this? What's my strategy here? Any volunteers? Yeah. Okay, solve equation two, then we get QR. So I, let's assume we have QR now. Then solve equation one for QP. Once you have QP, you can bring it down to equation three and then solve for A. Does everyone see that? Okay, so then I don't need to do the mechanics on the board. It's uh, fairly straightforward then. And we can just give those results for you. So QR then, if you're doing this, you can verify at home, is 0 0.5 meters cubed per hour by solving equation one, two. Okay, so solve equation two first for QR, then use equation one to get QP of 0 2.0 meters cubed per hour. 
Okay, that makes sense. QR plus QP must add together to get Q naught. So 2 plus 0.5 gets you 2.5. Then the final equation that you solve is A is 448 meters squared. Okay. So let me give you an additional piece of information. The area A is 448 meters squared, but you can't go buy a membrane of 448. Okay. Membranes are only available to you in those modules, as Sean showed photos of, or in yesterday's class you saw there in the video, that companies group a whole lot of modules onto a, onto a rack and then they split the flow. So if each module, let's just assume each module is 30 meters squared, then we would need 14.9 or say 15 modules. So so we require 15 modules to get that desired flow. Okay, now let me ask this. How, do draw, how would the flow sheet of those 15 modules look? Are they in series? Are they in parallel? Okay, we know it now. We can't go buy a 448. We need to buy individual modules of 30 meters squared. How do I change this picture, in other words, to reflect what reality is going to look like once I build this system? Do I put 15 in a row? That's series, or do I put 15 in parallel? Parallel, okay, so we saw this in yesterday's class. As well, we will take these um, that overall feed Q naught, and we'll split it up, and send it to 15 individual modules. So it would look something like Q naught will go to one membrane, two membranes, etc. So we'll split it up over multiple membranes, and what we will get here essentially are two flows. We'll get QP, I'll call this QPI for the ith membrane. And we're going to get QR for the ith membrane. And we're going to take those individual retentate flows, those individual permeate flows, and recombine them afterwards. Right? So that was, if you look back at the photograph I showed you of the treatment process in Cyprus, that's exactly what they do. You see all the flows come into the pole in what, or a header, as it's more correctly called, and then all the flows recombine and converge back into the header again. Okay, so what's sent, in fact, to each membrane, then, is not the full flow rate of Q0. We don't send 2.5 meters cubed to each membrane. We send uh, 1 15th of that. So, in fact, the flow rate going into that membrane there is 1 15th, and so... In this particular case, the Q naught for the ith membrane is in fact 0.1667 meters cubed per hour. So if you add up 0.1667 15 times, you get back to 2.5 meters cubed. The concentration, as I mentioned there yesterday, the concentration does not split. The concentration coming in, that is still 4 kilograms per meter cubed. Of course, that's an intensive property. And so it, it goes in over there. So now I'd like you to do the following. Just do a quick check for me. This membrane is 30 meters squared. Let's just check that these numbers balance. If you take 15 of them and add them up, what is going to be the QR and QP coming out over here? Just do a quick calculation and verify that. Basically, I'm, I'm taking this problem here where you did not know what A was. Now we're spinning it around. I'm telling you what A is. A here is 30 meters squared. I'm telling you Q naught and C naught coming in. And I'd like you to tell me what the outlets are. So CP is the trivial one. CP is zero. And what is CR? So, can you do a quick calculation and tell me what those three outlets are? So, I'll give you a minute or two to calculate that. Yeah. 
No, it's a concentration. Oh. So it's kilograms per meters cubed. So it's, it just splits. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's how much solids there are per meter cubed. So you're splitting up the volume, you're not splitting up the solids. Okay, so in fact, what we're doing there, remember, our problem-solving strategy has six steps. Define, explore, plan, do. We've done the do step. This is actually what we're doing here, the check. You've got the result. 448 meters squared is required. Let's check that that's realistic. Okay, so you're, in fact, moving into the fifth stage of the problem-solving approach here. So anyone got numbers for CR coming out here? No values yet for CR. This one actually doesn't need a calculation. Okay, CR is 20. Okay, because in the same way that the concentrations don't split at the inlet, they also don't split at the out. They were going to recombine them. We're going to get 20 kilograms per meter cubed over there at the outlet. Okay, so we're actually just down to two, two unknowns. So using the fact that CR at the outlet is 20, what is going to be the outlet permeate flow? What is going to be the outlet retentate flow on just one membrane module? Okay, so there again, the strategy is no different, in fact, to the one that's up here. We're going to solve two equations in two unknowns. And the first one to solve is Q0, C0 for the ith membrane is equal to QR for the ith membrane times CR for the ith membrane. So let's sub in some numbers over there. Q0 for the ith membrane is 0 0.1667. C0 is 4. QR is what we're seeking and then CRI is 20. And if you solve that, you get QR for the ith membrane of 0 0.033 meters cubed per hour. So a very small flow rate leaving in the retentate just from the one membrane. And if we check there, if we're going to do this over 15 membranes, we're going to recombine that retentate flow rate 15 times. So 15 times QRI then gets you back to 0 0.5 meters cubed per hour, which is what our original QR was. I'll, in fact, I'll just quickly rewrite up here what they were so we have, can cross-check. So this was 0 0.5 meters cubed per hour, and QP was Okay, so that check worked. Uh, the next uh, value to get is QPI. So QPI we can get from AI, from the ith membrane, times 0 0.02 times log of 25 over the retentate concentration is 20. Okay. So AI we know is 30 meters squared. And then QPI in our check, we can see is 0.1333 meters cubed per hour. And if you multiply that by 15, you get 2.0. Okay, so that, that shows then that our assumption that we split the feed in parallel and recombine them those numbers balance out. Okay, so it's just a quick uh, check that you can verify.
Any questions on that so far? Okay, so I'm going to uh, take this now the next step. So this check is actually step five in the problem solving approach. And the sixth step is a step that we've actually never done in this course before explicitly. I've asked you to do this in assignments and think about things. But this time I'm going to ask you to, to generalize. Generalize is to see how we can take this a step further and come to some general conclusions. And the question I'm going to ask here is, when we're generalizing, is I'm going to ask you, how is the area going to change if I increase Q naught? Okay, so this is a, it's not a difficult question. So let's perhaps put some numbers on it. If area doubles, Oh, sorry, not area doubles, if Q naught doubles. So we now find ourselves in the position where we need to treat five meters cubed per hour of material instead of two and a half. If Q naught doubles, what happens to A? What's your gut feel? A doubles, okay? You need to treat more material, you need double the capacity. And that is in fact true. And you can go verify it numerically by following the plan that we, we implemented just a few minutes ago. You can go verify that. So I, I, I won't repeat that. It's a very straightforward calculation. Let me ask this. Uh, if C naught doubles, how does area change? Okay, so you're now feeding a more concentrated material at the same flow, still two and a half meters cubed per hour, but you're simply increasing C naught. What is your expectation then? Does area go up? Do you need more area to treat a more concentrated material? Okay, so instead of four, I'm now going to send eight kilograms per meter cubed. That's the only change I'm making. So think about this. This, this will really test your understanding of, of what membranes are doing. We're sending in double the concentration, so eight kilograms per meter cubed. I still require QR. I don't necessarily need it to be 0.5 meters cubed per hour. That's not my requirement. Um, the only requirement here on the outlet is that CR, in fact, remain at 20. Okay, so that's my requirement. And that was always my requirement in this problem to achieve that CR. So QR will change. QP will change. The two of them, when added together, will still add up to two and a half, but they're going to change a little bit. CP is still naught or zero. So what do we expect to happen to area? Well, do I need a bigger membrane area or a smaller membrane area? What's your gut feel? Smaller, okay. Often our gut feel is correct, and in this case it is smaller. What's interesting is just how different it might be. Again, I'll, I'll leave the calculations to you, but I'll just draw a little table here for you. So C naught, QP, and A, and I'll put uh, values of 2, 4, and 8. And this is something that you can very quickly go do in a spreadsheet. So the generalized step is something I often expect you to do outside of class. Um, because it's, it usually takes a bit more work. You have to do a lot of extra calculations here. So here, I'm just going to do it at three values, but you could choose a variety of values. QP then, well, our base case QP was 0.5. We've got 0.5 meters cubed, um, not 0.5, it's, uh, this is QR. I mean, QR, my 
my retentate was 0.5 meters cubed per hour. And my base case was 448 meters squared of area was required. So I'd asked you to double that. And if you double it, you get your retentate flow increasing. And what's interesting is you get 336 meters squared required. Okay, so this was 15 membranes were needed in parallel. This one, if you're doubling it, you need less. You need only 12 membrane systems. So even though we've doubled C0, it doesn't mean that the area changes by quite that same ratio. Okay? We've only gone from 15 to 12. If you have C0, so we go from 4 down to 2, so you're now feeding in a less concentrated material, you still want to achieve the same concentration on the outlet, you're going to need a greater area, as you might expect. And in fact, that is 504 meters squared. And there, again, a little bit counterintuitive, the change or the increase in the amount of area isn't quite as dramatic as you might anticipate. Okay. So the thinking that I want you to take from this is, as I always emphasize in this class, there's always a trade-off between operating costs and capital costs. Changing C0 is something that you can do quite easily. You can dilute your feed with water. Okay, so if you're going to, from 4 down to 2, that's an easy process. But it's going to cost you a little bit more capital. You're going to have to buy those two extra membranes. But what's interesting is the sensitivity. The area isn't quite as sensitive to changes in the feed concentration. That's a good engineering insight. It means that if you've purchased a membrane, let's say, let's go back to our base case of 15 meters squared, and you see fluctuations in the C0 regularly. So your feed is of uncertain inlet concentration. That, that often happens, especially with wastewater treatment. You're just treating whatever comes in. You can regulate the inlet flow, Q0, that's quite easy. We can build a tank upstream and just vary the level in the tank and, and buffer and regulate our flow coming in. But we can't buffer and regulate C0 quite as easily. But what this shows to me that even if I double or halve that inlet concentration, the effect on area isn't quite so dramatic. I'm still going to be able to treat that material. Okay, so that's a great engineering insight that you only get when you do the generalized step in these problems. Okay, so any questions on that up to now? Okay, this has been a fairly straightforward application. Now I'm going to just kick it up a step and leave you with a problem to work, at, work on on your own time. Um, I'll show you just how to set it up, and this will be in the next assignment. But it's, it's not as, as difficult as it might seem at first. It follows the same idea that we've just done. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to add to this diagram as follows. So my change is this. Assume that we've got that membrane set up over there. There's my permeate flow. And in fact, what I'm just going to do here is move the permeate stream away. We've processed it and we're done with it. But what I want to do and add to this one is now I'm going to take that retentate. And let's say I'm not quite so happy with that retentate concentration. I'm going to send it to another membrane in series. Okay. And in fact, I'm going to choose another membrane. And both of these have the same area. So in the assignment, I will tell you what the area is. Area for the first membrane is the same as the area for the second mem membrane, except now, instead of putting them in parallel, I'm putting them in series. And I'm going to ask you to try and solve the outlets from this membrane. So let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got an outlet over here for the retentate and the permeate on the second membrane. And let's give these some names. So the retentate from the second membrane we'll call QR2. 
and CR2. The permeate from the second membrane we'll call QP2 and CP2. And CP2 is easy. We know this one. It's zero. Okay. Same for CP1. We've got QP1, that outlet flow rate, and CP1 is zero. And we're given our feed specification. So we know Q0 and we know C0 for it. So what is QP1? There's my first unknown. Let's just keep track of these. So we've got several unknowns here. QP1, we don't know what that flow is going to be. We don't know what this QP2 is going to be. We don't know what CR2 is going to be. We don't know what QR2 is going to be. So four unknowns so far. We also have this intermediate stream. So this stream is not something that we'll ever use. We just feed it straight away into the next membrane. But because it's the feed to the second membrane, we need to know its values. So CR1 and QR1. So the retentate flow and the retentate concentration. Okay, and as I said, we know the areas. We're told what they are. How many unknowns? Six unknowns, six equations. Okay, are you going to try and solve six equations all simultaneously in one go? One, two of those equations are going to be very nonlinear with a log in them. Right? Even your mass balance is a nonlinear equation. Q0 times C0, that's a nonlinear product. CR times QR, that's a nonlinear multiplication of two, of two variables, so two unknowns. So it's nonlinear equations. But you can break it down a little bit. You don't have to solve all six in one go. You could look at solving the first system first. So three equations and three unknowns in the first system. Three equations and three unknowns in the second system because by the time you get to the second system, you'll already know the inputs from your first go. First go. Okay. That's a deceptively simple plan because it's not quite as easy as it sounds. You can't sub one equation into the other, into the other, into the other. You'll see with this particular setup that you're going to have to use something like the bisection method or one of the methods that Dr. Adams taught you in 3E. And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. You're basically going to set up the equation so that f of CR1 is equal to 0. You're going to find the value of CR1 that gets you 0. Okay? And that's for the first system. And then in the second system, you set up exactly the same set of equations with different values this time and solve f of CR2 equals 0. Okay, so that just gives you a bit of a hint for the second assignment um, that I would like you to, to start planning and thinking about. Okay, so you can at least plan your strategy. The moment you get the assignment, you can sub in the values and give it a, a shot. Okay, any questions on this topic of the, the material covered today? Okay, so we'll, that concludes ultrafiltration. We'll look at reverse osmosis then in Friday's class.